Alright, uh, welcome to video two. So what we're going to do in this video, hopefully it'll be a bit quicker than the first one and it shouldn't have that annoying hum in the background. Uh, don't ask me why that happened on the last video. I think it's because I had my power supply plugged in and it's playing up uh, for my laptop. Anyway, I'm rambling. Right, so uh, you are going to be building uh, this short side panel and I put x2 times 2 because we're going to be making two of these. So your dimensions are uh, 65 by 25 and then we're going to add a rectangle on the top that is 25 by 4 and 20 in from the edge so this should be quite quick if you did the last one uh, but the second part of this video uh, second part of video 2 will show you how to join these to what you've already made okay so you should still have this open on your screen in Inventor um, if you are working on this top panel your final job to do is to click return uh, so that you're back at this mode. Uh, now it should all look like this. You should have a tab called assemble. Now we're going to click create because we're going to make a new panel and we're going to call it small side panel. Um, click OK. Uh, click anywhere but on here. So anywhere on the blank area and uh, start the sketch and start your sketch. It makes sense to pick a vertical one, so maybe the YZ or the XY plane, go with the YZ. Okay, right, what we're gonna draw now is the outline, so that was 65 by 25. So rectangle tool, I'm gonna to do things a bit faster now. Uh, so that's the vertical, 25, press tab, 65. Uh, you'll see it looks about the same width as the thing below. And now what we're gonna do is click finish. We're gonna extrude it. Now a little tip here, you can click extrude over here or you can press E, E for extrude, and it will bring up the tool. Uh, so you'll get used to the shortcuts. Click four, because that's our thickness, click OK. Uh, we're gonna add the tabs on now and they are 25, there's only two of them, top and bottom, 25 by four and 20 in from the edge. So we do that by making a new sketch. We're gonna sketch on the surface so we're looking down onto it. Draw me a rectangle. Uh, again, I'm going to draw it properly. So I'm going to do 25 by 4. Um, I'm going to get collinear constraints and make sure that edge is definitely joined to this one. And I'm going to put a dimension between here, click, here, click, move up, and that should be 20. Do the same on the bottom. So there we go. 25 by 4. Make it locked on do your dimension left to right 20 so you can see when you get used to it, it's quite quick click finish and now we're going to extrude and it's asking us which profiles well we want that and we want that now you might notice here they're going the wrong direction if I rotate my view and look at it so check yours isn't doing this it may be alright but if it's going the wrong way then you click direction 2 which will point them the other way not that we're going to use it but just while we're on it you'll see these other options allow you this one would do half and half this one would allow you to do half and half but with uneven sides so depending what you're trying to make uh, you can do kind of different effects all right but we just want to go left all right direction 2 click OK when you're done now you've pretty much made that second panel um, so you can click return and you'll see we're back in assemble mode and before you do anything else just click save yes to all and OK right now what we're gonna do now is we're gonna place another copy of this we've got two of these guys we don't need to draw the thing twice what we can do is we can go up here now for some reason mine says place from content center you don't want that if yours says that you want to click the lower arrow here and choose place uh, content center is like a place where a load of um, ready-made files like ready-made parts from you know standard things like screws and nuts and bolts are already there you don't want those you want your own you want to place your own parts so choose place it should pop up if you click safe and you should be able to see that you got the top panel you've already made you got the small side panel and you got the whole assembly uh, we just want to place another side panel so just click open you'll see it appears here and just click anywhere you like and you could add as many of these as you wanted look um, obviously I don't want that many so I'm going to right click OK and I'm going to just select the ones I don't want to keep and delete them 
Now the important thing to realize is although there's two of these, they are the same panel. So if I was to make a change to this, like put a hole through it, um, just to show you quickly, we don't need this hole, but this is just a random hole to show you what I mean. Uh, can you see the sketch has appeared on that one? And if I was to extrude that hole, make it a cut, that will appear in the other one as well. They're basically, they're like identical twins, they're linked. Uh, there is a way around linking them if you want to undo that, but I'll show you that in another video. So anyway, make yourself two copies. Um, if you didn't want to use place, right, you can actually just pick it, and like you would in Word, you can right click, copy, and then right click, paste. Okay, and you can still do Control C, Control V if you know the keyboard shortcuts, so you can speed things up like that. Right, anyway, we've got to glue this onto here. Now, what most people are tempted to do, first of all, is they go, oh, I'm going to sort of drag it into place, look, you know, sort of roughly line it up, and I'll do the same with that. And then, right, that's not how we do things in Inventor. Um, we glue them together with a tool called Constrain over here on the left. Um, so, make, pick Constrain and the two constraint tools you'll use the most are these ones mate and flush now they do what the pictures show mate if you pick uh, a panel on one object and a panel on another like a, a face of it so say this top face and this face mate will make them touch each other like they're kissing all right so just to show you for an example if i have mate selected and i pick that and then i click on that it will make them stick to each other like the picture okay I'll just cancel that um, if I had flush selected flush uh, will bring rather than make them stick to each other it will line them up side by side um, so for instance if I was to pick that face and that face um, I don't know if, if I look at it from the edge can you see what it's done they are perfectly aligned okay now is your challenge to use constraint and you'll need three constraints for each part because this is three dimensions um, it's a 3D model to stick them together so you're going to choose mate to start with and I'd like you to pick say the the face of this on the back and the face of the tab here now it may well position it in a random weird way like that but just click apply I don't know if you can understand what's happened there, but this is now glued. If I look at it from the side, it may be able to move up and down and back and forth. And even if I do that, it looks like it's not stuck, but it's actually always glued to here. All right, it's a bit hard to visualize. So that's one constraint, and you'll see it's appeared over here on the left, mate. Uh, the next one we're going to do, and I'm just going to move it up. I'm going to choose constraint again, and I'm now going to pick this bit here making sure mate is selected and I know that that would stick down onto there right now we've got two constraints one of them is left like in and out so you look I can't move it in and out I'm wiggling the mouse but it barely moves the other one is up and down because I just did here look and the thing won't move up all it can do now is slide left to right now we've obviously got to fix that as well so my next constraint uh, there's two ways of doing it. You could mate this little square here. See if you can figure it out with that one. There we go. Okay, and that now, look, is completely locked solid. I've got a constraint between that blue bit and the green bit. I've got a constraint between the green of here and the bottom of that. And I've got a constraint, sorry, there we go, between those two corners. That's locked it in. Um, I'll just delete that last one and show you another way you could have done it. So if you're at this stage, the other constraint you could have used is to pick flush. Okay, flush will bring two edges in line with each other. So if you're going to choose flush, then you would need to pick that and that. Okay. Or you could have done flush on the other side. This one and that one. Okay. So there you go, that's what I wanted you to do. Um, glue one panel on, and then as your challenge on your own, uh, stick the other panel on. I'm not gonna talk for this next bit, I'm just gonna do it, and then I want you to see if you can do it on your own. Okay. 
Okay. Now I made that look easy, but I've had plenty of practice on it. Um, constraints are really confusing at first, but when you understand what it's doing, uh, it makes a lot more sense. The way I like to think of them is, if I was gluing this together with wood glue, uh, where would I put the glue? I'd put it on the bits that I've selected, and then I would flush the sides, I'd slide them together, um, just to make sure it's all even, if I was gluing it up by hand. It's the same in Inventor. All right, so that's the end of video two. Um, once you've done that, just inspect your work, check everything doesn't move, and uh, yeah. Uh, actually, one last thing you could do, uh, we could change the material at this stage to start making it look a bit interesting. So if you double click on each part, you notice when I double clicked on this top panel, it selected just the top panel. You can go up here and there are all sorts of materials uh, you can choose from. Um, if you have got a very basic list, you can choose Autodesk Material Library. It may not load on the school computers. I can't remember whether they installed it, but you'll get hundreds of materials there. Uh, I went for on mine, I think I went for white um, oak, or yeah, we go white oak. Okay, and you'll see that gives it a kind of wood texture. So color one panel, click return, double click on your other panel, find the same material. And you, I just press W to find all the W's. Uh, white oak, there we go, solid natural. Okay, return. Now you've only got to do it to this one because remember these guys are linked, they are one and the same. All right, so get to that stage, change the material, save it, and now you can move on to video three. Make sure you save regularly.